glad you're here. I am Katie. If you're new, um, welcome to my channel. I like to share all of the fun things that I'm doing and I've made quite a lot of progress. I have some fun things to show. I think you guys will be interested to see. Um, yeah, let's get into it. I'm feeling better? Are you feeling okay? There's like so much strep going around here. It's insane. My oldest now has it and we had to call a bunch of pharmacies to find amoxicillin, like they're low. So I hope everyone's good where you are. <laughs> I feel like we should all just be walking around with hazmat suits, but I feel good. Yay, finally. <laughs> Which means I've been powering through my, my fun things. You know, you're home taking care of a sick kiddo. You got a lot of time on your hands. He's doing great now. So anyway, I hope you're all healthy and find all the amoxicillin you need. Apparently there's a shortage. Yikes. Anyway, I finished a few things. We talked last time about a gift I was making for my oldest niece, um, a hat. So I did finish the second hat and I think it's cute. It's my dog. Our neighbors have a cat, like an outside cat. Now they're like besties. It'll run through the yard so my dog wants to go run after it and it stays like right outside his line it knows where his line is and it will stand there and like wait for him and kind of go into these trees and out and like they play it's very cute and very annoying but what are you gonna do we live out in the middle of nowhere so he has to be occupied with something right now it's his cat friend it is cute cat. We don't have cats. It's sad. Anyway, back to the hats. I showed this one last time, right? Ta -ta. These are, it's from Clinton Hill Cashmere. They make these little jeweled uh, emblems you can sew on things. That one's a skull. <laughs> we'll see if she feels scully. Sometimes she's going to be goth. You know, emo. We'll see. I think it's so cute. I got a couple. They have bees. I bought a couple bees for myself. So at some point, I'll put that on a fun sweater. I think it's going to be awesome. So maybe you'll see the bees someday <laughs> as I work through those. But uh, I also got a tan hat and I was going to embroider by the logo. So can you see? I think it turned out so neat. I had to wait a while to get, um, I used water soluble like stabilizer. So I put it on the front and the inside and then, you know, put your hoop around that and embroidered it. And then when you just kind of swish it through some water, all that disappears. And I think it really helped keep all the embroidery from pulling the hat or from kind of like, uh, making all this wonky because it is a knit, you know, stretchy, but it still stretches. It still stays in place and it looks so fun. Yay. I put some flowers that should be meaningful to her on there. And I just think it's super cute. I hope that she likes it. So I think it's nice. 14 year olds can be hard to make things for, but I hope she loves it. I did my best. Her birthday is, I think, next week, so I finished them in time and everything. Yeah. Best aunt ever. <laughs> She's gonna look at him and be like, dang. We'll see. I think they're awesome. Yeah. And then I also talked last time about a doll, making a doll for one of my younger nieces, so I wrote to my sister-in-law and asked if she would like that. I don't want to assume, especially on a doll that takes a lot of effort and time, that she would want that. Because if she's, you know, into something else, and I want to get her what she wants. <laughs> I'm not just making stuff to make it, I guess. So she's super into Elsa and like all those. She's adorable, so. 
she's into all the fun things and I asked if she would prefer something like that or if I should make this and she said she would like this doll so I used all fabrics that I already had here I did not buy a single thing which made me very happy because Again, this is the year of using the things I have. And I did and it turned out so yeah. I only bought the shoes because I didn't like the shoes in the pattern. Uh, I'll show you the book first. This is where I get the pattern from. Storybook Toys. I think I've shown this book probably several times on the channel now. I really love it. Um, it has a ton of fun toys in it. It's got great instructions. I'd never made uh, a doll before having this book and now you know, I feel like I can make any doll I want. So I love the book. I've made probably six, seven things out of it, which I don't know about you, but is a little unusual. When you buy a book, it's maybe for a pattern or two that you love and the rest are just kind of gravy, fun to look at, right? But there's so many toys in here that are just awesome to make. So if you love doing that, then this book is great. Great, great. So anyway, I got all my goodies together. I use freezer paper for the pattern pieces because you can draw on one side super easily. And then the other, the waxy side of freezer paper, if you iron it onto fabric, it just sticks. So then you can cut around, make like perfect pieces, transfer all the marks. It's magic. So if you don't do that for your pattern pieces, consider it, it's really helpful. Anyway, here is the doll. Is she not adorbs? Ta -ta. I did the hair just like her hair. I embroidered the face. And then I added just a little, um, I have like chalk pastels to give a little blush to the cheek. Just so cute. This is her back if anyone cares. She's got little like bloomer pants and the dress. I did for some reason, I don't know if I don't fold the edges right, but the dress pattern always ends up huge. So I don't know. I kind of added an extra fold in there. I hope it still looks, it looks fine to me like it does in the pictures, but man, it's got like an extra inch on the back for some reason. I don't like it. So I fixed that. Probably fixed my own mistake, who knows, but every, Every doll I make it, I'm doing the same thing wrong if I if it's me, which is, I guess, helpful. But I added some embroidery to the collar. I never used the fancy stitches on my machine, so I thought that was fun. But I kind of had to play around with which motif would like kind of like curve with this collar easily. So I found a good one, I think, just to add a little snazziness to her. And this is the first yarn wig that I've made. I typically uh, sew it. So like each strand is attached to the head by you and a piece of thread. Um, and this one you created the kind of like strips of yarn that you sewed a line through and then you could kind of place it on the head. And then you just secured that line of stitches down um, ended up with a ton of hair on this head, but it kind of gives the, the free flowing hair, you know, and there's no bare spots. I don't, I think it turned out really cute. I was happy with the, with the yarn wig. I think I would do it again. It was not, um, difficult. Something about whenever I get to the hair of the doll, I'm like, oh, this is going to be awful. It's so hard but it's never as bad as it seems so <laughs> you can do it I'm always intimidated by that part but it works out fine I think she turned out super cute the uh skin tone I wish I'd had something a little pinker but this is kind of what I had so I think she turned out really cute I will now send her off to her girl the only problem came my youngest son now once a doll that looks like him. <laughs> I've never made him one. I think he thinks it's just a fun idea. I don't know if he would actually like do anything with it, but so maybe we'll be working on that soon. <laughs> I haven't made a boy doll yet. I think in the book, 
she recommends kind of embroidering the hair on if it's short so we'll see we'll see i do add like a heart on my dolls i don't know why i just think it's super cute so like can you see it on all the dolls i just put the initials of the person who's receiving it and gets a cute little detail i don't know when you get to hand make things you get to add whatever little special thing you want so that's what i did i think she's super cute right and she wears american girl doll size clothes it is quite a large doll so if you wanted to make this pattern from this book you can buy american girl doll clothes and they fit or i have in the past made i made a luna love good doll using that pattern and bought patterns from what is it? it's like pixie fair they have a ton of american girl doll sewing patterns i mean like historical dress casual you know a thousand pairs so many really reasonably priced so i have made those and they fit and work so if there was something you were wanting to specifically make i would look there for patterns that you could put on the doll because it does only come with kind of the one dress pattern in this book you can add sleeves but that's about it so if you want to make more doll clothes i do not enjoy making doll clothes they're so i don't sew clothes in general and making them on a tiny scale does not improve them they are cuter they're cuter but they're more difficult so anyway those are my finished things right two gifts killing it <laughs> Well, you have to stop and celebrate your successes, right? So that's what I've been finishing. And then I started a quilt. As I said, you're abusing what I have. I have several kits that I bought many moons ago and that just have sat. I assume I wanted to make this as a gift because it's really not my colors or, you know, things that I like to have around my house but it is very cute so i'll show you the pattern i'm sorry the kit came from craftsy.com many years ago um i joined that's how i really expanded my own skills was craftsy classes um if you are looking for like a good library of things to learn from i really got a lot out of those i don't think i like their newer courses they seem shorter and kind of less i don't know just i i watched one and i was like this isn't as good as the the previous version it's owned by a new company now so back when it was just craftsy they had really in-depth classes with you could buy the kit and then do the class and i learned all about like machine quilting how to better actually piece and cut these things ton of knitting classes which really helped because knitting is difficult to learn from a book which is how I learned so I was not doing a ton of things that actually help you execute patterns like I did not know you know that you could use stitch markers to you know mark stitches or to show certain none of that's in a book really it just shows you like here's how to actually do the stitch and here's the pattern and so there were all these little things that I didn't understand of how to read my knitting, how to like get good gauge, how to any of that. The classes really helped. So anyway, back when I loved Craftsy, I bought some kits and <laughs> didn't get around to all of them. So this was one. It is a field trip pattern. That's the pattern. I don't even know if you can. I'm sure you can buy it from Craftsy, but they had boundless fabrics and this was like a a line of fabrics um i have seen boundless fabrics sold but i could not find any of these i was trying to buy enough to make the back with to match these but i didn't have any luck so i'm not sure you could find this pattern but it's just kind of summery sorry i had <laughs> i had the thread already on there start quilting another bit i'll show you the pattern it's just throw size, so it's like 80 by 80. Ugh. Can you 
see. <laughs> yeah, it's got, uh, you just made strip sets, basically. Kind of scrappy, but the red, there was just one set of red fabrics and the red fabric was always purposefully put in the strips that you sewed together to get the diamond outline in red. Let's see if we can accurately show that. So like see the box around is red and it goes throughout the quilt in red and then the inside is scrappy. Yeah. So I think, I mean, the quilt turned out great. It was quick to make. And then I am quilting using perlite cotton, just going around the square into the center, like so. I think I've made, I've quilted maybe a third of it so far. Um, so I'm hoping to, sorry, I bumped the whole table there. Super cute. I really like, uh, how quickly it came together is a really quick pattern. So if that's what you're into, it was fun to make a scrappy pattern. And then I'm going to add, I think, some ties to like the center of the, where the red meets up, like here at each of the ends of the diagonals and then in the center of each. Not to form any actual stability, just as like a cute, I don't know, I think they're a little, a little extra. Little thing there that'll be cute, a little tie. So we'll see. Maybe next time we talk, it'll be done. I don't know. Hand quilting, you know, can take some time. So we'll see. But again, I don't know what to do with the quilt. <sighs> I'm sure I'll give it to someone. I don't think I'm gonna keep it. So we'll see. Some niece will be like, oh, thank you. <laughs> And then I went to Joanne Fabrics and just got, I found this flannel that matches one of the, let's see, like this fabric here. And I found something really similar in flannel there. It actually ended up being like one of those wide uh, fabrics. I didn't even know I got it in like the, you know, 42 is usually the width of the fabric. This was, I don't know, double. So when I went to cut for the backing, I was like, oh, never mind. I had I didn't have to cut a thing. It just fit. It was great. And now I have a, a bunch of this red checkered fabric. So <laughs> it might be the back of something else in the future. Kind of sucks, you know, as you're trying to winnow down what you have to end up with extra of something, but it's fine. It'll get used. So I couldn't find the regular fabric I liked, so I had to go with this flannel. So now it's quite a heavy summery looking quilt you just have to make do right it turned out very cute so i'll be working on that just gonna hand quilt it and be done it went so yeah they're so fast i mean how we talked what two and a half weeks ago and yeah when you just sat down and do it it really just flies so that was a good quilt pattern you should try it it was nice i haven't made anything like that before so you made like the strip sets and then you sewed the top to the bottom to make a tube and kind of then cut vertical strips out. And then you took out a seam between the squares that you wanted to kind of, it's like those infinity, I don't even know what they're called. I'm forgetting the name now where you can make it like wide and, th and skinny, the strip sets. And so they kind of look like they're moving along your quilt top. Maybe I'll make one of those and tell you what I'm talking about. I'm sorry, I don't know off the top of my head. And then I got to work more on my uh, advent blanket from Harry Potter. My Harry Potter advent, yay. From Yarn Cafe Creations and Dragon Horde Yarn. They do a lovely advent every year that's Harry Potter based. This is book six, year six, I believe. So again, this is the pocket full of posy blanket a free pattern from pearl soho they made it originally in their posy yarn which is this actually back color i got which is blue bayou very pretty and then the front is uh all the minis 
And it is quite on a small needle, but man, it's really enjoyable. It's an easy project to take with you because you have long rows. They're easy to tell what you're doing and you don't have to pay too much attention, which is pretty much my, <laughs> my set of rules for projects I take. So yeah, I did. That's the first color that was Bloody Baron, which is the house ghost of Ravenclaw. Cornelius Fudge was the first color, and then this is Slug Club. <laughs> They're really pretty. I just love their yarns, so it's fun to get to use it in like a blanket. That's the mini I'm on. But yeah, you change every two row, two inches, I'm sorry, and then you uh, do like some color change rows, so they do weave in and out. It's easier to tell with the purple that it's kind of broken up by this color, right? So it goes, this is the blue, then you have purple, blue, purple, blue, and then the purple. And then when I switch again, they'll kind of jog their way up to the next color. So it kind of blends them in together instead of just a straight, harsh stripe. Very fun. I love this blanket pattern. It is how I learned brioche. Um, this is brioche knitting, if you're new. <laughs> it's kind of that double-sided squishy it's a really fun uh method of knitting so straight back and forth two color brioche very fun and it looks intimidating it is not intimidating to do you're slipping like every other stitch it's super easy you can do it but yeah that is the pattern i learned on because it is a great one to learn on i think a sea of brioche by the end you're like, oh, I got this. This is easy. I can do this in other things. So that was my method. Worked great. And then I did get more on my sweater. Yay! It is so big. It's a big sweater. But yeah, I finished my first set of the pattern. I think it's turning out really good. And then you go, the next set, you'll finish this motif. And then like halfway through this, I'll start my sticking stitches for the sleeves. So I am nervous. <laughs> Not for the actual stitches part, I'm sure that's fine. But when I have to cut them, that will be interesting. But that was the whole purpose of the sweater, was to learn to steek. I don't wear a ton of cardigans. I think that is what most people do steeking for is, you know, knitting across the front and then you can cut the front to make like the sides of your cardigan. This one, you can continue knitting in the round and then you just cut for the sleeves. Um, we'll see how it goes. The pattern is very fun. I like color work and I'm hoping that sticking is awesome. Some people flip and love it. Cutting their stitches is like <laughs> a fun kind of torture. I don't know, we'll see, but I think it's very fun. So yeah. That's, I'm sorry, this is the Iggy Peck Sweater by Tannis Fiber Arts. I list everything below if you're ever wondering what the heck I'm talking about. Um, if you don't catch it, I'll put it below just so you can go and find it too. I am using her yarn that she used in the pattern. I have nothing gray, so I'm excited to have it. It's going to be a big, honestly, it looks like a 90s sweater to me. Like Carlton would wear this on Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Like that's what it looks like to me. <laughs> so... I'm excited for a little throwback sweater. It'll be good. But yeah, that is what I'm working on. I think that is everything. Um, next time, I am hoping to get up to these steak stitches. Fingers crossed. Have this quilt finished. That would also be great. And figure out who I'm giving it to. <laughs> Which niece wants it? We'll see. I'm also trying to sell my sock knitting machine. It just did not... It didn't do... I didn't enjoy it like I thought I would. Like, um, it made beautiful tubes. I mean, the machine itself is well made. It's so heavy. I have an Erlbacher knitting machine uh, that I got last year. And it's just, it's really large. I don't have a ton of room in my one room <laughs> for 
for it to sit so I don't want it to go to waste like someone should be using this it's awesome so uh, it's on eBay right now we'll see if that goes anywhere but that is crafty happenings yeah I hope somebody loves it it should be it's like a beautiful machine somebody should be making tubes with it somewhere I think I made one pair of socks like start to finish with the machine I just want I want patterned socks I guess I think that's the part I enjoy about socks more than I thought I thought it'd just be fun to like make a bunch of socks but honestly I like the pattern in my socks I guess so it'll be fine someone awesome will have a cool machine I did not get a lot of use so somebody should be able to just crank through those for a hundred years live and learn can't love all the crafts right I don't know I'm really tempted by um spinning spinning yarn does anyone do that here it looks so like a meditative process to spin yarn I think who really caught my eye was um I love fat squirrel speaks is one of the crafty uh, YouTube videos I love to watch. She's amazing. Um, go see her if you haven't. That Squirrel Speaks. So she did, like during the pandemic, I swear, <laughs> she was like, she was like my Xanax, which I don't take. She was it. She was so calming and like lovely to listen to, to just know there was someone that nice and just personable out there making things and talking about it she really helped me <laughs> feel less stressed and crazy but she did a video of just her spinning it was like ASMR just watching her like feed this yarn into her machine and from then on it's been like wouldn't that be nice but the only problem I see with spinning yarn is that you then have to use the yarn so you're actually perpetuating having <laughs> more around so you had to buy the fiber and then make the yarn and then make something with the yarn and at what point would I make yarn good enough to use in other projects I have there's so much beautiful yarn in the world like I don't know that I need to also make it because I like making the actual things I get to wear or gift <laughs> so yeah I don't see myself buying a spinning wheel it's just always going to be in the back of my mind is something really fun I don't know it looks so great doesn't it I'm sure you all love it but anyway I think that's all I've got for today we made it I hope you liked the things I made and if you you know buy that book and make a doll please tell me like um tag me on Instagram or something I want to see if you do it too it's like addictive I don't know about making toys but they're just so fun to make so yeah I hope you love it um get that book get these patterns make something awesome tell me what you're making share with me <laughs> so yeah I'm gonna get back to work I think I'll I'll do more hand quilting today I've been watching the Alex Murdoch trial um Emily D Baker has a YouTube channel she's a was a prosecutor now she does commentary on cases and so she's watching like gavel to gavel and just commenting through it and it's so fascinating <laughs> I love her channel too if you're looking for something to do so I'm watching the the uh, trial with her while I work it's really nice to have something on that you know just her talking through it so fascinating I love her so go watch that and and make things like me <laughs> so yeah that's all I got I'll talk to you in a few weeks Go have fun. Go drink lots of water. You look great in those jeans, by the way. I'm glad you're, you know, rocking it. You look good. Okay, come next time. We'll talk some more. Bye, guys.